What's up? I started a new job today, a new worship leading position. It was a lot of work today. Today was my first day. Uh, I'm too tired to talk about it right now, but I'll let you know more about it tomorrow. Day number two of the new job. Got a staff meeting at 9.30, but first, time to read some Bible. All right, just got a shower. Time to head over to church and uh, I'll show you around. Maybe I'll introduce you to this new church that I've been leading at, hopefully before the staff meeting. It's 8.16 right now. Staff meeting's at 9.30, so I should have a decent amount of time. I only live like 10 minutes away. Let's go. Welcome to my new church. I'll show you around in a second. I've got this staff meeting to get to first, so I'll talk to you in a second. Well, here it is, the new church that I'm at. Unfortunately, the staff meeting went a little bit long today, and so I don't have time to show you around, but it was a good staff meeting. I learned a lot. It went longer than normal because number one, this was the first time. So it was like an hour and a half. Usually it'll be like half an hour, 45 minutes, I think. But I learned a lot. It was a good talk, but I gotta go get some lunch, it's like 12.30 right now. So I'm gonna go home, get some lunch. I'll show you around tomorrow when I come in tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be like five seconds for you though. So see you tomorrow. Here we are the next day, different shirt, same Spencer. All right, let's take a quick look around. Once again, time got away from me today. I was working on uh, pro presenter files. You know, things, shouldn't take that long here shouldn't take that long to set up worship lyrics and stuff like that but whenever you have to start from scratch and like get the template going and stuff that stuff takes time to set up so i tried to spend a good amount of this morning getting some systems in place so next time that i work on these things it doesn't take that long so hopefully that happens i'm sure i'll tweak along the way but here is the church that i'm at now i'll show you around so let's take a look around All right, let's start at the back. Man, I'm right by a window, so it's super bright. But let's start at the back and I'll show you around the tech area. Let's start off at the soundboard. And just keep in mind whenever I'm going through this, I just started three days ago. So I'm gonna point out what I see. I don't know everything that they have here. I don't know the make and model of everything. I'm like over an overseer of the tech sound AV guys, but there is like a an actual group of guys who are in charge of this. I'm not even really in charge of this. I just oversee it and I haven't even gotten to talk to them uh, in depth about what they have here. So I'm just going to point out what I see, but let's start with the soundboard here and take a look. Oh, also there's a rumor that all of this stuff is going to be upgraded by the end of the year. It's currently September, the end of September. Tomorrow is October 1st. So in like three months, this stuff is probably all gonna change. So that'll be fun to document that process. But let's take a look at what they have right now. Starting off, we've got an Allen and Heath GL2400. This is a 32 channel board. I think they might be going up a couple more channels in the upgrade. I still need to double check with the guys on that, but this is what they have. Like I said, I don't know much about it. I just know what I've seen. I've led worship here for the past couple Sundays, so I am starting to get an idea of what's going on. They've also got an AVOM system. I'll show you that more once we get up 
to the front of the stage and I know that I've been using these AK AKG uh, wireless packs. This is the PT450. Let's see what else. This is the pack I've been using on Sundays. So this is another PT450. So it looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six of those. From what I've used it, like it's it's worked pretty well so far. So I'm happy with that. For microphones, got some more AKG gear. These are the AKG HT450s. And part of the reason that they're looking to upgrade, by the way, I take these uh, these foam things off whenever I lead because I don't like them. Part of the reason that they're upgrading this stuff is because obviously the frequencies changed. And so I think if you are in like right here, focus, if you are in the 600 and up frequency range, I think it is, then you can't use those anymore. So. They don't use this one anymore, but they do have a couple that are just under 600. So that's part of the reason that we're upgrading as well. As far as the computer goes, we've got an iMac running ProPresenter 6, and that's what I was messing around with this morning. I was trying to get templates set up for that and stuff. So that's what we've got back here. Let's move up to the stage and see what's up there to mess around with. All right, let's take a look at the stage back here and see what we got. Let's start on this side of the stage and see what we see. This is like a really old keyboard. They use this, they have a traditional service here. So I think they use this for like an organ sound or something. Then we've got a Yamaha Motif XS8 for a keyboard. Uh, they do have some electric drums here. I think there's room for a real acoustic set, but we'll see about that. These are the Roland TD6Vs. That's pretty much it. Um, we have these Aviom boxes all across the stage. So there's an Aviom system here. I'm not sure what the plan is for upgrading that whenever we upgrade the sound. Not sure if we'll keep those or not. Got the other side of the stage here. This is usually where I lead, so this is what I see on a Sunday morning. I've led worship here the past six weeks as a guest worship leader, but I just officially started this week. So this is my view on Sunday mornings. Obviously, they have the, the pews and stuff. That's going to be part of the upgrade, I hear, is that they're going to switch to chairs. So as far as lighting goes, they just have these... Uh, I don't even know. They aren't park hands, but... Maybe they're park hands. I don't know what you call them. Upgrading lighting coming in the future as well. And then people ask about the projector all the time. This is a Vivitech something. I can't tell the model number, but not that important. It works good enough. I think they're upgrading or switching to TVs though, because it gets pretty bright in here. There's stained glass windows here. And so it lets a lot of light in. So. Switch to TVs, hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier to see. There is a confidence monitor projector up there. I haven't clarified if that works yet. I haven't seen it on on Sundays, so I don't think it works. But I think the plan is to put some TVs up here for confidence monitors. So that'll be kind of cool. Maybe I can convince them to put, like, it would be perfect to put one right there. To just have it, like, right above the sound booth or over there, whatever. I don't know. We'll see what happens. That's all still in the works. I did want to show you the stained glass window, though, speaking of stained glass windows. All right, I don't know if you can see it right now. It might be blown out, but this window is very interesting because take a look at the name on it. I'll give you a close-up here. Apparently, I had some family members that went here like a really long time ago. Does this have a date on it? No date on it. I think I was like back in the 50s, but I think I had family members at this church like a decent amount of time ago, like for a significant amount of time in the past. Like there's a graveyard over here or a cemetery, which I'll show you once I step outside here. And I think there's some Cormanese buried in that graveyard too. So apparently my family has a history at this church. I never knew that before. It was kind of a surprise whenever I came in here to lead worship the first Sunday and 
I saw my name on a stained glass window, or my last name on a stained glass window. So kind of interesting, kind of a cool connection piece. So that was a quick tour around. Like I said, I just got here a couple days ago, so I don't know too much about things. I'm just pointing out what I see, but I'm sure we'll explore more as I get more comfortable here. So this is it. This is where I'm leading worship now. As far as Sundays, like it's just me leading right now. They have some musicians in their church, but they never really had a leader to pull them all together. So that's part of the reason that I'm here. So that'll be a fun document to process as I kind of build a worship team. But for now, it's just me and an acoustic guitar. So let me go outside once again. I didn't have much time to show you around today because time got away from me. There's so much to do whenever you start at a new church and like, yeah, I don't know. It's one o'clock now, maybe 1.15. And I was hoping to shoot this video at like 11, but then a million other things jumped in front of my path. So that's just the way it works. This first week is gonna be a choppy journaling of what's going on. Let me show you outside and then I gotta go and get some lunch. back day what is this day four now thursday got some pro presenter stuff to finish and then i'll talk to you a little bit more about what i'm doing today talk to you in a second all right i'm done with the slides like 15 other things happened between me actually starting the slides and me actually finishing the slides but we're ready now uh ready for the first service there's an 8 30 service here which is the traditional service so that's really what i was working on today i'm not sure if i showed you yesterday i think i did um i worked on the slides for the second service which is at 11 and that's the contemporary service that i lead at but i'm kind of overseer of both of them i'm just more involved with the second service so got that done now it's time to run through some songs it's it's funny because whenever you're a worship pastor or worship leader in part-time full-time whatever it is you think this is going to be amazing because i'm just going to be able to sit down and play guitar all day but that doesn't happen you don't just sit down and play guitar all day that's like 10 percent of your job there's 90 percent of other things that you have to do. So time to do the 10% of the job that I wish was 90% of my job or 100% of my job or however you want to look at it. Let's go run through some songs. Figured before I head up to the stage to run through some songs, I'd show you what songs we we're doing in the first service. I didn't pick these, somebody else did. But these are the hymns that we're doing. On Jordan, Stormy Banks, I Must Tell Jesus, Whisper a Prayer in the Garden, Seek Ye First. So if you're into hymns, there you go. I 
just want you uh, uh, uh. I just want you So I haven't really talked about this position and what it is exactly, so let me explain the full story. I'll take you on the journey from the very beginning. So about a year ago now, back today is the 1st of October, in October like 15th, I think it was, was my last Sunday at my previous worship leading job. So for this past year, I've just been working on leading worship well and like really focusing on that. And I told myself after I left my last worship leading position that I would give myself until the end of August, like until the end of summer, until I started looking for a new worship leading position, because I just wanted to focus on leading worship well, and luckily I was in a place where I could do that. So that was the plan, and then I was on the internet one day, as I often am, and I'm not sure if it was on Facebook or on some other website, but I saw a job listing for a church that's like, this church is like eight minutes from where I live. So it's super close by. It was a part-time position, which sort of my vision for, at least for now, for what I want to happen is I want to be like a part-time worship leader somewhere so that I get the experience of leading worship and I get to serve in a church. So I feel like God has called me to do that. But I've also felt really called to expand leading worship well and work on that. And so those two things, it was like, this church is right by me. It's a part-time position, so it'll work perfectly with leading worship well, where I can do this job for 20 hours a week, leading worship well for 20 hours a week. If anything else, I'll just get some experience in interviewing, and I feel like this is a, an opportunity that I need to pursue. So I sent in an application. And then not too much longer after that, I got an email from the pastor and he was like, Spencer, thanks for sending in your application. We wanna have an interview with you. So I came to the church and had an interview. This was like the first week of March, maybe, maybe the second week of March and things went really well. And they were like, we like what we hear. You'll hear back from us soon. And so I waited and then COVID happened, of course. And so things got put on hold. And so I was like, it's fine, whatever. Like I wasn't really looking for a job yet. I was going to wait until August, but I sent my application back in, in like February, the end of February. So I was ahead of my timeline anyway. So it was fine. It was whatever. Things were put on hold for a little bit. Fast forward to June and churches reopened and they were like, Spencer, we want you to come and lead worship as part of the you know, the extension of the hiring process. So I came here and led worship for their first Sunday meeting back together in a building. I think they had one service outside before then. And so I led worship and people liked it. And they said, Spencer, we love what you're doing. You'll hear from us soon. And then I was like, awesome. And so I waited for a week and I waited for another week. I'm not sure how many weeks it was, but then I got an email that said, hey, Spencer, thanks for applying Thanks for coming and leading worship. Unfortunately, our pastor is moving to a different church, and so we're gonna put your hiring process on hold until we find a new senior pastor. And I was like, that's fine. Like, I completely understand. Not something you can control. You can't control COVID. You can't control your pastor moving to a different church. I get it. So I was fine, and I left things there. They were like, we'll contact you when we're ready to resume the process again. So I waited for a couple weeks, and then, I got a call and they said, hey, Spencer, we want to move forward with your hiring. So are you willing to come work here? We'll figure out the details. And so I was like, give me a week to pray about it. So I took a week to pray about it, thought about it, thought what would be best. And now here I am. Obviously, I accepted the position. So I am now the part time. This is a part time position director of worship at Salem United Brethren. So what does that mean? Like, what am I actually doing? Well, here at Salem, there are two services. So I would identify Salem as like a transitioning church. So they've always had a traditional service. And then they've recently, well, not like super recently, but more recently added a contemporary service. And so they're trying to figure out 
what that looks like. So my responsibilities are basically overseeing both of these services. So there's an 8.30 service, that's the traditional service, and then there's an 11 a.m. service, and that's the contemporary service. I don't have like a ton of responsibilities during the first service. It's my understanding that I wouldn't even really have to come to that if I didn't want to, although I'm overseeing it, so I feel like I wanna be here regardless. So I've been coming to the first service. There's people that lead that. That's like hymns and stuff. Really what I'm here for though is to focus on the second service, the 11 o'clock service. And they don't have like a worship team right now. So I've just been leading with an acoustic guitar, but there is good news. The good news is that they have musicians here. They just haven't really had anybody to lead them. So that's really my main responsibility, at least as I view it, is that I'm building a worship ministry pretty much from scratch. There isn't like a structure here, so I get to set up the structure of what I want this to look like, which I think will be really exciting to take you guys along on the journey of that and kind of see me figure things out. So I'm not sure how much I'm gonna vlog like this. I thought it would be fun for the first week at least. So that's what I'm doing. Hopefully this is interesting for you. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, let me know in the comments below because these are, they're fun to make. They take a lot of work, but I enjoy making them. At least the, I made one came out like a couple weeks ago or maybe last week. I'm not sure when this video is coming out. But yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do it. I know I do like talking head videos sometimes where I just teach. I still plan on doing that because I feel like those are super beneficial, but I also want to focus more on like doing stuff like this and I feel like I'm going to have a little bit more time to do that even though I started a new job. I'm not sure once again when this video is coming out so I won't say the full details but you'll see on Instagram a post about what my plans are over there and things are changing a little bit. So keep that in mind. I want to focus on the YouTube channel because I feel like I've seen a lot of traction on it. That being said, these first few weeks like I view my responsibility right now as creating some systems to get like the services where they need to be. And so I've been focusing on that and more importantly, like building relationships with people. That's gonna be my number one priority is to start working with key volunteers who are already serving and then people that I see that can work on the worship team. Like they don't have a worship team right now, so I kinda of gotta build one. Uh, luckily, there's some other staff members here at the church and one of them gave me like a church directory and highlighted all of the people who he thought would be a good fit for the worship team. So that was super helpful. So I'm gonna be contacting a lot of people like today, like right after I'm done filming this video and then obviously into next week until I have a worship team build up. So that's, that's the plan. That's what I'm doing here at this church and working on leading worship well at the same time. Speaking of building relationships with people, I'm actually about to go meet a guy right now who I view as a key volunteer. Um, he's been here, I've led worship here for the past six weeks, and he's been here like every week running sound, so I definitely want to build a relationship with him and get his story and just get to know him better. So that's what I'm about to go do. Today's Thursday. I'm not sure what tomorrow holds. I probably won't come into church because I've been here every day of the week. I don't know. I might stop by though. We'll see. I feel like I'm ready for Sunday. I just need to run through the songs one more time. We've got the slides ready, coordinated with people. I think we're good. So you might see me tomorrow as well. But yeah, let's go meet this guy. I'm not sure how much of it I'll show because that, that'd be kind of weird if I just brought a camera in. But I'll talk to you at some point again. It's a little bit later in the day now. I forgot to tell you that I have a Zoom call with the rest of the tech team. I don't know what they're called at this new church yet. I don't even know if they have an official name. Maybe I'll get to pick a name and make it something really cool. I don't know. It's 6.45, the meeting's at 7, so I probably shouldn't wear this Funkle shirt. So uh, let me change real quick. All right, I think I'm ready for the meeting now. Got like five minutes to hop on. I'm just kidding, I'm not wearing this to the meeting. But I didn't remember how to tie a tie. I like never wear ties, so I don't even have real pants on right now. <laughs> uh, let me switch into something real. Green shirt, 
That seems safe. This isn't a super serious meeting. We're just meeting with the company that's one of the companies that's giving us a quote on a new sound system. So I don't really know the details of the meeting because that just started this week, but they said, Spencer, you should be a part of this. So I got to get to this meeting. I'll talk to you afterwards and let you know what I learned. Excuse the really weird lighting. I don't know why it's like this right now, but good, uh, good meeting. Things went well. Um, we didn't make a final decision yet. Basically what the church wants to do, and I told you about this whenever I was showing you around what the church looks like, like they're looking to upgrade and I hadn't really talked to anybody about what the timeline was, but it sounds like it's moving pretty fast. Like they want to get it done by Christmas. So within like the next two or three months. So that's super encouraging. It looks like my hiring was just part of a bigger picture that they're trying to accomplish. So that's pretty encouraging. That's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I'm going to do something. So I'll see you then. We are now a whole two days since I last recorded. Today is Saturday. I took Friday off. If you're interested, I went grocery shopping, but I didn't want to show that to you. I'll save that for the Instagram stories. And so, oh, that was a gross wink. I didn't like that. Sorry about that. So today I'm going to run through my songs. There's kind of two run throughs that I did because last time you saw me, I was running through my songs on Thursday. So there's two run throughs that I do. There's like a musical run through where I make sure that I know all of the musical aspects of the songs that I'm leading, how to play them, the lyrics, stuff like that. You know, the stuff that you really need to get down before you lead worship. And then there's a second run through that I do that's more of the spiritual side of the run through where I'm focused on number one, I call it worshiping through the set list. So there's running through your worship songs and then there's worshiping through your worship songs. I think I have a video about that. I'll link it right here if I do. Today I'm going to worship through my set list. And what I do when I do that is I want to go on the journey that I'm about to lead people on. And so I'll worship through the set list. It helps me identify like themes that I need to point out to people if there's something like that. Helps me craft my speaking transitions. I already have some thoughts for speaking transitions, but this will help me see it in the context of the actual worship gathering that we're going to be having. And then it also just serves as a personal worship time. So I'm going to do that. I'll talk to you afterwards and let you know if I have any great insight. All right, songs have been run through. No major epiphanies. I'm doing what I had planned from the beginning, but you never know if things are going to get changed up last second. You know, we prepare for what we can prepare for, and then we let God do the rest. So even tomorrow, things will probably change again, but I have a plan going in. So if, like, I get there and I'm not feeling anything specific, at least I have a plan going in. So that's kind of how I view spirit-led worship as like, the spirit can lead you on Sunday mornings, but he can lead you in your planning time too. And sometimes he reveals the plan to you on Monday and not just whenever you're up on stage on Sunday. So that's why I prepare in advance. My plan for this Sunday is the person who's preaching, they're preaching on like the Lord's Prayer and sort of how it's like a format that we can follow to pray and a, the sermon title is The Simplicity of Prayer. So that's why I picked, I picked Nothing Else by Cody Carnes coming out of the message. And I just wanna lead people through this moment of praying a simple prayer because this isn't a song that my church is probably familiar with. We haven't sung it before. It's not like a, like it's a popular song, but for us worship leaders, we know it. But for most of the people in the church, I don't think they know it. So I just wanna lead them through this moment where I can sing that song and they can catch on near the end, but at the beginning of the song, we'll just be praying simple prayers. So that's kind of my thought process for how I wanna lead my church on Sunday. And then of course, a couple other speaking transitions along the way. But that's the gist of it. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna to film tomorrow. It's a Sunday morning, it's busy. I don't know how much I wanna film at church 
I don't know if people will be comfortable with that, but I'll at least check in with you in the morning, maybe show you my morning routine of what I typically do on a Sunday morning, and then also like wrap up the video because that'll be the last day. So stick around for tomorrow. Don't leave yet. See you then. morning worship leader today's the perfect day to lead yourself well lead your church well and lead worship well let's do it finishing up the vlog today 7 30 not doing too bad on time i'm headed to the traditional service at 7 30 right now the service starts at 8 30. i think i told you before i don't really have any responsibilities at the traditional service but I feel like I should be there since I'm kind of overseeing it. So, let's go! That's it. 
the first week is officially done. It's now Monday of the next week. So thanks for following along. Hey, if you liked this video, leave a like down below. This video took a lot of work. It was super fun to make though. If you wanna see me make more videos like this, I'd be up for it. I'd be up for vlogging a little bit more. So let me know if you want that down in the comments below. Also, if you've got any questions about anything you saw in the video, leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to respond to them. Also, if you're looking to improve your worship leading, there's a free audio training that I put together called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. And I always keep these in mind whenever I'm preparing to lead worship and actually leading worship. So this week, these were like the five things that I did that helped me have a successful Sunday on Sunday. So if you want the free audio training. Click the link in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.